Good morning, out here on my little morning walk. And uh, I was thinking about something last night. And um, I remember there was a scene in this movie about Oliver Cromwell that they made, Hollywood movie, and not very accurate to the real true Oliver Cromwell. But uh, at one point they're preparing for battle and, and um, his son comes out, Oliver Jr., and he was out there on his horse and Oliver Cromwell says to him, he says, uh, where's your son, where's your sword? And he says, I have no sword. And he says, you must get one and wear it. You know, it's a mark of your rank and things. And you know what? I'd like to ask the question to Christians out there. Where's your sword? Do you carry one with you? Um, and specifically so to these preachers in these modern church buildings. I have a lot of people, they'll comment and they'll say, uh, what do you think about pastor so-and-so? What do you think about brother so-and-so? And whatever, you know, I'll check into these guys. And, and it shocks me how many of them, they're up there with their effeminate looking little clothes on and in their front of their church and they have a little microphone that comes down here and, and you know, little skinny jeans on and they're going around. They're not even holding a Bible. They're not even saying to the people, turn your Bible to this or that or whatever. And I thought... It's kind of like going into a battle under a commanding officer that's not armed. Follow me into battle, men. You look and you say, does he have a sword on? No. Well, he has it in his hand. He's raising it up to go into battle, right? No. Well, why not? Well, I actually talked to him in private. He doesn't believe in the sword. Would you follow a guy like that into battle? I would hope not. <laughs> Um, and yet a lot of these people trust their eternal salvation on these hirelings that don't carry swords. Oh, uh, hey, pastor, I have a new um, woke international ecumenical um, peace, love, joy, happy version. Is that a good one? Oh, yeah, whatever you prefer. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, but is it the perfect word of God? Oh, there is no such thing as a perfect word of God. Just your preference. <laughs> uh, just, you know, is it battle tried? Is it, is it tested? Is, has it been proved in spiritual warfare? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Let's just go out there and we don't, I mean, just, you don't really need to carry that because it's offensive. That's frightening to me. Uh, I will tell you right now, um, I am a fanatic, if you haven't figured that out yet, I'm a fanatic for this book, this King James Bible. And I want it on me. And I carry a Bible pretty much all the time. Um, I used to carry this one in my pocket all the time, but it was you know, in, the, in my front pocket when it's in there. You know, if you put it in here like this and like that, you know, it kind of has a profile almost like I'm carrying a pack of cigarettes or something. <laughs> And I'm certainly not going to do that. And I don't want to cause the word of God to be blasphemed. Oh, there's that crazy preacher. He's, look at, he's got a pack of cigarettes in his you know, front pocket. No, oh, it's a Bible, you know. But uh, that's why I stopped carrying it in my front pocket. But I have one in my camera bag. I have you know, a Bible in each of my vehicles. Uh, of course, my office has quite a few Bibles. We have Bibles here in our tiny house. Um, you know, I want the word of God around me. And uh, when I preach and teach the Word of God, uh, I want to have this book somewhere present. Um, and uh, I'm not perfect, all right? I try my best to preach and teach the Word of God, but, you know, I'm not perfect, but I carry a book that is. And that's what I'm going to turn you to. Turn in your King James Bible to a particular verse or passage. It's extremely important. And uh, so just a little bit of an exhortation here. A uh, very quick way that you can tell if a man is a hireling or not is if he is holding a Bible or, or if he's just walking around up there on stage and he's not touching a Bible. He's got his little Kindle or iPad or something. I don't trust a guy like that for one second. Um, but something else I want to cover here really quickly, the qualifications for a bishop. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 
down through to verse 7, it says, This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Um, actually, just had a brother in the Lord send me an article where um, one of the guys out there at uh, John MacArthur's Babel building, cult building, of the one of the teachers out there, Grace Seminary or whatever, and uh, he got caught with zipper trouble, fornication, and uh, some pretty bad stuff and whatever else, and had to step down. Happens all the time to these guys. Uh, they're not of good behavior. All right? Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, that he, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. I had a guy recently in the comments say, have you heard of Pastor Brett or something? I think the guy's name was, and I, I have no idea what's that. Now. Oh, he says the King James only people are Ruckmanites. I thought, well, there you go. That's a problem number one. Um, I've talked about the whole Ruckmanite thing and whatever um, for many years now, how it's used to just tear down anybody that believes in the King James Bible. And a lot of people haven't even heard of Peter Ruckman, and yet they're called a Ruckmanite. Um, but I checked into this guy, and the guy looked like he was probably 200 pounds overweight. And I don't mean he weighed 200 pounds. I mean his normal body weight and then 200 pounds on top of that. And uh, that's a problem. I mean, you know, obesity. I'm not talking a little bit overweight, okay? I'm talking morbid, morbidly obese, as in it's going to kill you. Barely get around, you know? And I've known pastors that are like that, these hirelings and, and whatever, that they're just so terribly out of weight, or out of shape, excuse me. Not out of weight, <laughs> not, not uh, by a long shot. They've got plenty of that to go around. But uh, it shows that there's a, an issue there. I remember reading um, a little booklet about smoking from uh, Dr. Hugh Pyle many years ago. And um, he was talking about the thing of brethren that are overweight and you know morbidly obese. I'm not talking a few pounds overweight, but he said you get some guy that's morbidly obese. He said the, the, uh, it's just the surface of the problem. There's all kinds of flesh issues with people like that. You know, when you get that big, uh, you have to get that thing under control. And if you are a preacher, then you are held to a very high standard. And um, you have to make sure that you have everything just right. And if you don't, you will fall and you'll make a mess out of things. And uh, a lot of these preachers out there, I can guarantee you that guy from Grace Theological Seminary, uh, doesn't have the King James Bible as his final authority. So he's going into battle with a limp little wet noodle that he got from the Vatican, New American Standard, or maybe the Legacy Standard Bible, the one that John McBarfer came out with. And I, you know, I get sarcastic about these guys because they're trying to destroy people's faith in God's book, the King James Bible. Well, you're just so radical on that version. And yeah, why am I so radical? Because I studied Bible version, the Bible version issue for 24 years. I know all about the different manuscripts and everything else. I could, you know, waste my time and go and learn the Greek and the Hebrew and all that other stuff, but I'd rather just learn my King James Bible and uh, preach it and teach it. And uh, because I need to go into battle with something that I can recommend to other people. I need to be able to say, all right, here we go, brethren. This has worked for me for years. I've lived by this book for years. Come on, let's go into battle. Here's how you fight this here's how you fight that and um, that's what you have to look for I wouldn't listen to anybody that doesn't use a King James Bible quite frankly because they're very ignorant of the truth of the Bible version issue um, if you're genuinely born again you will realize this is God's book God purified this King James Bible as he was purifying the English language again you know Go back to 1611, well, the English language was still fairly new. And um, 
you know, they had different ways of spelling, different fonts and things that they would use in their writing, the Gothic font versus our modern Roman font. Um, you know, Times New Roman, it doesn't mean you're connected to the Catholic Church or something. But what I'm saying is, um, God refined the English language. God brought out the greatest book ever in history. And uh, that's what you should be preaching and teaching from and, and living your life with. Um, and I'll tell you right now, there, we're going into some really rough times here in the future. And if you don't have the most powerful spiritual sword that ever existed right here, um, if you don't have that, I can't guarantee you anything. Um, you need to have a King James Bible. Uh, there are no real true arguments against it. I mean, again, uh, people are just so lazy. Well, what about Easter and Acts 12, 4? It's been answered. What about the contradictions and over here and over there and 1 John 5, 7, the Johannine comma? And it's been answered. It's been answered. Uh, well, what about this edition of the Texas Receptus? It was different from this edition. It's been answered. What about Erasmus? He was a Roman Catholic. It's been answered. What about the differences between 1611 and 1769? It's been answered. It's all been answered. Well, but I, I want to argue in the comments section. Um, buddy boy, there's not much time left. Um, and what you're going to see in the future is you will see that separation. Um, the modern Christians with their little lightsabers. Look at my fancy new NIV. Or you can have the old sword of the spirit that works. Um, I choose the sword of the spirit. And if you're going to follow this ministry, I'm going to lead you into battle. Uh, I, got, I have the scars to prove it, <laughs> that I've been in quite a few battles with people. And I will lead you into battle with the King James Bible. You will never once hear me correct this book, ever, for any reason. All right, this is God's book. And I'm completely, 100% assured of that. So, just thought I'd put out that, this little video here. Where's your sword? Do you have a sword? Are you prepared for battle? Hey, uh, Russia pledged their support to China, or excuse me, China pledged their support to Russia. Russia is saying that they might try to take back Alaska. Um, we might have their sleeper cells all through this country. We might have this nation be invaded. There's a mass, mass casualty event coming up before the election, they're saying. Um, are you ready? Do you have uh, ways to protect yourself? You know what I'm saying? Uh, don't, leave, don't leave home without it. Um, a lot of people look, they say, oh, you're overweight. You look like you're overweight uh, because you're kind of big on the sides there. Well, uh, it, it is some extra weight that I've added, you know, to my body here, but uh, it's not part of me naturally. Um, you better get into the thing of both spiritual and physical defense. Um, just going to be real straight with you. Um, <clears throat> you know, oh, brother, you shouldn't have shown your handgun in, on camera. At this point, I don't really care, to be very honest with you. Um, I am very heavily armed, um, spiritually and physically. And uh, not because I'm wanting to hurt people or anything else. Not at all. Again, I don't want to hurt people with my phys physical weapons or with my spiritual ones. I am going to protect, though. I'm not going to be a victim. I'm not going to go down spiritually because I didn't have God's perfect word. I'm going to fight. And I'm going to try to be here to get through this big reset that's coming. Um, because I want to be able to be uh, a preacher that can preach and teach the Word of God and say I got through the rough times. And um, anybody thinks that they're going to come here and hurt my wife and my little boy? No. Not as long as I have life within me. And um, you know, I said in another video I did this morning about the police in the area that they've gone from 28 troopers down to two. And uh, we rarely ever see police in the area anymore. So that's good. No, it's not. I'm not for without rule of law. 
Um, I've known a lot of the police officers in the area. I've talked to them in things, gun shops and whatever, talked to the police. I'm not anti-police. Uh, there's corrupt ones, sure, but there's good ones as well. And I think it's a bad thing to have the police um, dying off or quitting or whatever is happening. That's a bad thing. That's a very bad thing. And uh, I will defend um, innocent people. I will protect innocent people, both physically and spiritually. That's what I'm here for. That is my job. Uh, Leo, a good one, is a minister of God. According to Romans chapter 13, they have the sword of justice that they're supposed to bear. They're supposed to punish the evildoers and praise those who do good. Um, and I have that sword as well. I have uh, this sword. I carry it into battle. And I will continue to fight for the body of Christ. I will continue to fight to try to keep us free. And um, I will expose what needs to be exposed and warn about the different hirelings and whatever else out there. I mean, if you're still going to one of these church buildings, what are you waiting for? Get out of those church buildings. I mean, if you weren't convinced during the pandemic thing, uh, you should be convinced now, all right? Uh, those places are, are uh, very corrupt. They go along with whatever they're told to do because they are government corporations. So, but that will be it. I need to get going down to the office. Got a bunch of things to do. So, uh, see everybody later. And, um, boy, watch out for hirelings that don't carry swords.